Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, the Nanda Star Angel. But before that, I would like to say thank you for watching the show live or at a later date as it means a lot for me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray and I help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angel cast and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny. I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Ananda Star Angel, who will be imparting her wisdom about how spirituality, when you understand it, can help you take control of your destiny, which will help you with your calling, your passion, to be of service in the world and to make that your reality. She is a sound healer using gong, chimes and drums, an angelic Reiki teacher practitioner and uses spiritual re re response therapy to help connect you with your own divine soul energy. She runs retreats and has her own YouTube channel with free transmissions and a monthly moon cycle readings. She is a wonderful calming and ethereal presence which automatically fills you with these, with testimonials including... Anand is a fantastic healer. She completely connects with higher self and divine guides. Truly in the heart, powerful, honest, and deeply inspiring. So without further ado, hello Anand and welcome to the Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? Hi Ray, thank you very much for inviting me to have this interview with you. I'm good, yes, thank you. Welcome. So before we get to this fascinating conversation, then whether you're watching this live or the recording, Please hit the like love button as I love watching hearts and thumbs flash across the screen. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it the thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates on all recordings. Now, you can ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Ananda and I want to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So, Ananda, why don't you tell us more about yourself and then how understanding spirituality can help women on their journey? Hi. Hi again. So I, um, I teach angelic Reiki. I'm an angelic Reiki healer. I also work with sound. I work with divine light. I help people to connect to themselves, to their soul, their own divine light energy. And um, that, that's, what, that's what I do mainly. I help people to connect back into themselves um, in, a, in a very, very simple and a very organic way, in a very calm way as well. So with regards to spirituality, I feel very much that it's, um, it's very much uh, about our personal journeys and it's about a journey back towards ourselves, back to reconnection with ourselves. And what that brings about is awareness, understanding and ultimately quite, quite a bit of, of knowledge as well. And when we have awareness, we then know what we're doing with ourselves and what we're doing with our lives. And it gives us a lot more choice. It allows us to understand that we have choice and we have the power to create change and to create what we love. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so what are the best ways of, of, you know, diving in and getting to know about our spirituality? Well, there are lots of tools at hand, especially at this day and age. Um, and a lot of people say that we're on the brink of uh, a new age. This is the age of Aquarius. But I kind of feel that it's um, we're at the start of a, of a new golden age where we, um, we really evolve to our, our true potential at this time of, um, of this kind of unconditional love being unconditional love and when we're able to do that it changes all our dna and it changes our perception of um, ourselves it changes our perception of others it changes our perception of the world as well so 
Yeah. So I've forgotten what I was going to say. Yes. So we're on the brink of a of an of a new age, and um, and the tools that we have are meditation and, as you know, hypnosis. Um, yoga is one thing as well, which we can use. There are lots of healing modalities, but what I'd like to stress is they're tools. They're tools at our disposal. There's lots of choice nowadays, which is brilliant, so we can pick and choose and check out what works best with our vibration and where we are at that time. So I think that meditation and sound, our expression, and also the investigation of ourselves, our bodies through yoga, and also energy through, um, through angelic Reiki. I find that angelic Reiki is a wonderful workshop and you teach it as well, so you yeah. know that. It's not just a workshop to, to help people to become healers. It yeah. actually, no, it actually really helps us to connect with, with our divine energy, our divine light energy. And it opens up all these amazing, amazing awarenesses and um, amazing gifts that are innate within us, which we may never have thought or never, never believed. I think, I think the thing is that we never believed that we could actually do these things or we actually have the capacity to, to be what we really dreamed of being. So lots and lots of tools, which is absolutely wonderful. So it's just finding just checking things out and there's so many free things that people do nowadays i do some free transmissions That's right. and you, do, you do free meditations as well so you can check us all out and see if it works with you and then you can dive in um and we work you and i work with the highest divine love mm. so we're very very safe to work with and it is um it is a, a very gentle and very calming energy and uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's just amazing. I mean, spirituality, sometimes people think the word spirituality is you have to be a certain way and you have to have gone a certain way before you can be called spiritual. But I think that's really daft and um, it shouldn't really stop people from getting on with it. Um, I think that's what I said earlier. I think spirituality is all about your journey of awareness back to yourself, back to your true self devoid of all of the negative ego and all the chat that we have and all the thoughts and all the yeah. feelings no you can't do it no it's not like that why are you doing it like that no it's too expensive blah 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 so it's the journey back back to our true selves and back to back to what we really are ultimately which i think is is love which mm. is the, the the greatest the greatest energy in, in the whole universe yes. Yeah, mo 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 most definitely. Uh, I, I think that's what what everyone, whether they realise it or not, strives to get in 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 their lives. No matter what they're doing, everyone wants yeah. that ultimate love. Whether it's, um, I mean, quite often it's the love of other people. When really, yeah. what what we really want is the love of ourselves to actually be yeah. totally accepted of ourselves, totally love ourselves, rather yeah. than looking outside for love. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And when you have, or when you work towards that point, because we're all work in progress anyway. Um, so, you know, it can be a bit challenging at times, but the times when you do manage to do that, it brings so much clarity and it brings so much understanding. And that that's, that's ultimately what we want and what the tools are there in, in service of that to help us to get to that point. And to get us to that still point so that we we have a much greater understanding of why life is working as it is why we're getting all these experiences that we may be getting at that time so when we're when we're really really still and we're connected to ourselves and we can we just we're just base and create that love for ourselves things just get much much clearer much clearer yeah then we can make choices yeah and I, th I think what a lot of people do have trouble with is get into that space of you know calmness and not having all this stuff going through their heads so you know what would, what would you suggest to um somebody if they're kind of like yeah but i try and i try and sit and i try and get into that space but i have all this chatter going on in my head 
um, and then, you know, what would you suggest they do? Well, persist. Just persist. Um, I think that guided meditations are a really good place to start and to just keep keep using them every day, even if it's just for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Also making sure that you get out in nature and get mm. out, and just, just get out and be with trees and, and, and just be outside with plants, even, even if you were... If you did something like borrow my doggy or whatever, so that um, you're you're just taken out of your normal zone and you're given a, a slightly different experience, I think that's a, a really really good thing to do. I think meditation is a a really really good thing to cultivate every day. If you miss a day, well, don't beat yourself up. You can just do it the next day. But uh, I think it's it's a really really good tool to 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 get to connect to yourself, and also um, it, what it does as well is eventually the mind chat. I mean, you can it's okay having mind chatter. You just give yourself a bit more time then. Just let the chatter go on and on, uh, and then eventually, you know, it, it it will sort of calm down and it will stop. You can say, yeah, yeah, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, sure. Okay, fine. And then, just like, which is what I said, one has to persist with it. And eventually, it just calms down. And even though this chatter might be going on, you may find that you're actually getting, you're getting calmer, and things are getting quieter. And um, it, it's not really so bad. Sometimes, if we try too hard, it doesn't work. Mm. You've got to cut yourself some slack as well. And, and, and give yourself a, a little bit of space, but just trying. And, I mean, there's so many people who do meditation nowadays. You can do a group meditation. You could go for yoga or you could go for dance. And then sometimes there's a bit of quietness after that. And that's a great way to do it. Another thing you can do if you like dance, you can just go have a good dance or, or have a good sing or, or sound. And... Um, and if you you do it from your heart, it kind of it does it does really help to create a space which is more conducive for you to actually come into your center and come closer to yourself. And it helps yeah. you to hear it helps you to hear more as well. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not sort of like with the physical ears. That's with your inner ears. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because you also do um, sound healing, don't you? Yes. And I that do. with gongs and chimes. And, yeah. and that so so how how can that help um help women etc you know to get in touch with their their inner their inner self to help them on their journey mm. well when someone comes for sound work or sound healing the space which i prepare is just one of unconditional love so it's it's always a it's always a very calm and gentle space where you can just be yourself and when we start working with the sound and I start, um, I start with a gong or if I start sounding or singing, it just helps to, it just helps to, to bring the person deeper into their center. I always find that when we finish, they feel amazing after that because sound also works on another level with your body. It, it really gets into your body and you can, you can really feel it. I mean, you can imagine when you hear your favorite song, what it does to you. And when you hear your favorite dance song, you start to tap and you start to move and it changes the whole atmosphere. It has this amazing ability to just shift things, even if it's just on for a minute or two. So sound healing is really, is, is really, really amazing. And I, I really love it because when, when I finish giving a session to someone, I feel great as well. <laughs> so we both win, so which is absolutely brilliant. It's really exactly. And you've and is it two gongs you've got? No, at the moment I've just got the sun gong, which is the biggest in the series. So it's it's uh, it's quite it's quite big, and it has an um, it has an amazing low tone, and so you can get quite a, quite a variety of sounds with it. And sometimes you can make it sound like. Um, can make it sound like a whale as well with these other little tools besides the mallets. And so it sounds like dolphins or whales singing. So it's it's yeah, it's just an, it's just amazing. And you can you can also tinkle on it and you can knock on it. So you get this variety of, of sounds and when a person is just 
lying there, uh, knowing full well that they're completely safe. And it basically that space helps them to open open up even more, and it allows their hearts to open up even more. And by doing that, they can then receive what they need to receive from themselves, from their own divine light, because. I believe that all healing, what we're doing is we're holding space for, for these people. We're not actually healing them as such. No. We're, we're bringing through, we're channeling or we're a tube for their energy and their high self decides what they need, you know, what they need at that time. Yeah, yeah. and I've actually had, um, I've actually um, uh, had some gong sessions with Ananda and they are very, very, very good. I, I, quite, I quite like the gongs. <laughs> and that. also like the little char um little chimes that make little watery sounds that yeah, they're, they're fun as well they're really really yeah. great they're quite ethereal so yeah we yeah. We, we, we like Number that seven. it's like yeah. water and fairies all dancing around <laughs> on you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and, it, and, it, and it does clear and it does clear a lot of a lot mm -hmm. of stuff out out, mm -hmm. out from you um mm -hmm. because obviously you know to fully be being yourself you kind of do need to sort the past out really mm -hmm. to to get rid of all that stuff and I, I think I think sounding are, um, is quite good at that isn't it about helping clear out stuff that you no longer need mm -hmm. um that, that doesn't serve you anymore yeah it really really transmutes it it's, it's just amazing it really really is amazing and um yeah, it can be it can be quite it can be quite fast as well, which is which is really great. Of course, there's always a, a little bit of homework that we need to do after that because then we carry on from being in that sort of wonderful state. So when we leave, we need to make sure that we do our own homework so that we remain in that vibration as well through the through the day, through our, our normal lives. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sound sound is yeah sound is just amazing and just just from i mean we're making lots of sounds from the words that we're speaking and and by dint of that it, it already has a vibration so as as we're talking together this is creating a, a vibration in its its own right and i would and i would believe it's a vibration of, of love mm. yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's a de de definitely, our, definitely our conversation, you know, and that's the energy that I put in, you know, I put into the into the exactly. show. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 for it's for love. love because that is the that is the ultimate thing for, for you know, for all of us um, mm -hmm. around that. But it is sort of like that you allowing yourself to love yourself mm. totally and completely. Which isn't an ego, you know, isn't an ego trip. Um, oh, I love myself. I'm the best there is. Um, is it really? It's it's more of a deeper. I yeah. actually accept who I am, what I am, where I'm going. And uh, hey, one of the cats has made an appearance. Oh, no, it's the dog. Hello. <laughs> now, when, when Ananda was saying you could take the dog for a walk, um, I don't think she was offering for you to go around to her house and take her dog for a walk. <laughs> unless unless you really like to he's very very sweet he's really lovely. Yeah. look at the camera look at the camera Yay. he, he is really gorgeous and i've been around there when um <laughs> and has been running angelic Reiki workshops and he, he comes in and he's absolutely brilliant in there um, he's, he's, yeah he's, he's kind of and he brings his own energy yeah, um, yeah really good. Uh, to, to work to as well which is absolutely brilliant yeah. now you also do spiritual response therapy yes so, so that that's something that i don't think a lot of people would have heard about so mm -hmm. give us an idea about that okay so we have what we do is we connect with the high self of the person of the client but when we're doing other healings we, we do that this this is this is um, a modality where we have a series of charts and we investigate with a pendulum we douse and we investigate where the issues and what the issues are and where they lie and then we can go into into those areas whether it's past or present or even future or even
we can transmute them when we find out what they are. So there's also quite a quite a, a learning around it as well, um, because then we may understand that it's sometimes it's a family thing and it's not really ours. Sometimes it's a past life thing and it's it's really time to just let it go, transmute it, and just completely let it go and move on. So it's a it's a really good um, it's a really really good uh, healing modality, and I also use it um, with great success for clearing and transmuting properties. So it is yeah. So what what we do is we work with the land, the vibration of the land, because as you know, energy is, everything is is energy, yeah. and land is energy as well, and even your our homes and our buildings they absorb. And they also the electro everything is electromagnetic, so it absorbs and it and it radiates just like a crystal. So the land, if you imagine, there have been a lot of battles on a piece of land. So that there there's and, and sometimes you may have people, you know, a lot of people died on the land, and if there wasn't someone who knew how to help the souls um, to return or to go with the angels, basically, sometimes these these souls can get stuck there and they can get stuck there for a long time. So when we work with the land, we check that out. We see if anyone needs to be transmuted and taken to the most perfect place. Um, we're also transmuting um, other energies which may not want to be there or should not be there. And, and we also do it for we also do it for the building. So it's not just um, those energies, it can also be negative energies which have which have come from the people who lived there previously, and mm -hmm. perhaps the people who live there now, or maybe their guests or visitors. Um, so it, it's it's really it's really really good, and I would recommend that that homes are, are at least you know they're, they're worked on at least twice or three times a year because so many things happen when we have families, mm -hmm. and um, you know things happen. Sometimes we have challenges and. And if, if it goes on for a period of time, it can anchor into into the building and it can anchor into the land. And then you find that you're being kind of, even though you've gone beyond that, you find that you're still being, that there's some sort of um, energy which is still kind of vibrating that which you, you thought has finished. So that's then it's time to just have a good washout and yeah. transmute, it, transmute it all. Yeah, so, so do you think if there's sort of like the energy in a house is or, or a building um, is kind of like stagnating or it's it's not uh, quite right, that it can af it can affect you. So it could affect reason why you're not totally in love with yourself, why your life isn't harmonious. Yes. Yeah, very much so. Why you feel kind of depressed all the time or why you feel like, there's no hope or why why you feel that whenever you try to meditate or do something to get you closer to yourself or reconnect with yourself, there, there, there's something sort of, there's some sort of restriction. So yeah, so it's got to be, it's got to be transmuted basically. Yeah. 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 Mm. Now you, you also um, do a live YouTube um, uh, uh, stuff as well, don't you? Where you where you go into Oxley's Wood and yeah, and and, and uh, you know how, how how do you find sort of like doing doing that live live stuff? Um, I get a bit embarrassed sometimes, especially when there are people around. Cause I'm a bit self conscious with those sorts of things. It's actually a lot easier to just do it at home. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Sometimes it's it's quite nice to be in Greenwich Park or Oxley's Woods because th those places have got their own lovely vibration as well. So that's why one of the things which I suggested just now for people to reconnect with themselves is to actually go out in nature. Um, and so by by creating those videos there, I, I hope that people might get a sense of what they're missing out basically, and to encourage them to go and connect with these places. And we're so lucky in London that we have a lot of green spaces and we have trees on the pavements. And, you know, and also if you have a garden to, to do some planting or go and spend a bit of time there, you might be surprised. 
you may actually find that your garden has got lots of fairies or elementals and they may have some messages for you and they might be a bit cheeky at times but really it's it's really really lovely and it, it's it's a way of breaking up your it's a way of breaking up out of your normal life which may be very work oriented or maybe it's very family oriented which is absolutely fine but it might provide you with a place where you can just be yourself for a little while or, or actually think about what you really want so it might give you some space to actually do that yeah and and you, you can always if you live in a flat you know you've got a balcony you can always plant pots yes you potted plants are lovely i mean i've still got your aloe vera which is really lovely <laughs> I, i've got a garden but i've got i've got so many orchids and they're actually really easy to take care of because i'm terrible with overwatering and underwatering. So see i can't me and orchids don't get on at all <laughs> and i think you're either an orchid person or you're not an orchid person i'm definitely <laughs> not an orchid, orchid person because they die on me no matter what i do i <laughs> fear plants I, my, mine just keep breeding and I, I, I'm having to repot about three times a year I've got a load more that I need to repot so if anyone out there is watching and they want to know the vera plant please contact me I've got I've got plenty yeah, well. <laughs> I killed a lot of bonsai oh no <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've never tried the bonsai so yeah, if I can't do all kids, I'm probably not going to be able to do bonsai. So I think that <laughs> might just tip me over the edge of me a little bit slightly. <laughs> but all I like succulents, as you like cactuses, and they're really easy to take care of as well. Yes, they, they are. They, they they are very. I I yeah, I had some once um, in the flat I lived in, and they were on a windowsill. Mm -hmm. um, actually, my kitchen windowsill, and the sun was beaming on them all the time. And I must admit, I've really did forget to water them for weeks on end. <laughs> but they survived. Oh, exactly. So they're, they're, they're fine. And, they're and, it's, fine. And, it's, and it's nature. You've brought nature into your house. So, again, if you can't get out into nature, get yourself a plant and, 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 connect, with the, and connect with the energy of the plant. Yes. And, and, again, that helps with your spirituality as well, doesn't it? Because it it opens you up more to the sort of like loving energies um, mm. because I find most plants have got a loving energy about them. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I think I think plants and animals are more unconditionally loving than humans. I think we've got the bulk of the challenge on this planet as because I think it's because of our potential. Yeah, because of the potential to um, to 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 be that, to truly be un unconditionally loving. Um, but when when we look at animals and you look at plants, and scientists have actually agreed now that it's not um, survival of the fittest in nature. It's actually a lot of cooperation. And mm. when you have trees around each other, they actually support each other. So if one tree was unwell or diseased, they've actually found that the other trees through the root system, they'd be providing them with more nutrients. So they're actually giving that tree more nutrients because it's it's better for it's better for them to all be standing because if one went, it might take a couple of them down. And the second thing is once the sunlight hits the, the, the forest floor, it starts to dry it out a little bit. So it reduces the fertility of the soil. So it's in all their best interest to actually help each other. So I mean, and and when you look at um, when you look at animals, especially animals which group together, whether they're prey or whether they're um, whether they're um, the, the hunters like wolves, they work together really really well and they support each other. And lions do as well. I mean, they're predators, and they, they, you know, but we all have to eat, and they never waste anything, unlike us. You know, they yeah. don't waste nothing. Nothing is wasted. Nothing is more. More is never taken. Um, so they are a brilliant example of how we we could live, and uh, how we could live in a more 
so natural and heart said maybe natural is not the right word because I don't mean that we go back to living as cavemen no but but they provide a really good example of cooperation and um, and being yeah. happy with, with having an, enough yeah and it's, it's 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 sort of like respecting um, other people and working with them and and all working together as, as one yeah exactly yeah um, and that and, and again you know if, if you look at um, certain um, tribes etc you know they they kind of like they have you know they look after each other including children elderly mm -hmm. whereas mm -hmm. we kind of like here yeah we just put the elderly in the home or the or the children don't have as much as the parents love them and want them to want to be with them they can't because they've got to work um, yeah. Yeah. So, so so communities are really quite Mm. A big thing and I think the way the energy is changing on the planet and lots of stuff is lots of stuff happening I think that is sort of like beginning to take place more and more we're getting more and more communities yes yes exactly and I mean doing what we're doing as well there are lots of communities on Facebook that that um that we can connect with and we can support as well um, but I think you're. I think you're right. The community, the community, um, the importance of community is is really coming back. I think we've had uh, we've had our um, experience of um, nuclear. Is it nuclear? But you know, like separate families and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So we've had our experience of that and how hard it, it, because I'm 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 a I'm a single mom, so and I I don't really have family here. So it, it is. It's it's really quite hard. It's it's great to have family around to help, or a community of people around who maybe might not be able to help physically, but you can converse with and and get some advice from if if necessary. And also the good thing is if if um, if we connect the families with similar age children, we can share with we can share all the the childcare, and it's great for the kids because they get a chance to meet other people and play with other kids and see how other families live and what I love about London is how diverse the cultures are we have so mm. many different peoples here and and there's so much to to learn from from each other and so much to to yeah so much to experience from each other so many different dishes to eat as well <laughs> mm, yes yeah, it's, <laughs> which really, which is really great yeah, we yeah, it's good that there's there's there's, there's a really good uh, mix on there. Now, um, as you know, I do guided meditation angel card readings, and each week I normally ask my guests whether they would like a mini guided meditation or angel card. But this week, Ananda has kindly offered to do a guided meditation, short guided meditation for us. Yay. So I'm going to hand over to you, Ananda, to do the meditation okay great thank you thank you ray and thank you very much for this opportunity to share this with you so a, a lot of the meditations that i do are quite spontaneous and they're generally channeled anyway yeah so, yeah exactly so we, we're just going to go with the flow and see where this where this takes us but ultimately the intention is to just to facilitate and to help you to get deeper into yourself, yeah, to increase and enhance your connection with yourself through your heart and for you to also be able to love yourself more, yeah, and make decisions from that point, from the love that we have for ourselves. So ultimately, they will be the, the best, the most loving and the least negative ego-based decisions and choices for ourselves. And hopefully this will create a much more joyful, uh, creative, fun and rich life for all of us. So as one, as one evolves, you know, many, many, many others evolve as well. So that's the intention. Okay. Cool. Yes, okay. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mouthful, isn't it? Anyway. So deepen our connection with ourselves and increase our love for ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you'd like to just close your eyes for a few moments 
and you can just slow things down, especially for people who have trouble or, or, or who find that their minds are chattering quite a lot. You can just use your breath to connect with yourself. And the thing to do is just to slow everything down. And usually we're running around and we're very, very busy. And now is the time for you. This is your time. So use it to just bring in more oxygen into your body. So you just breathe deeply and breathe according to your own rhythm. There's no rights or wrongs about this and it's not a competition. So you just slow it down as much as you can and as much as is comfortable. And after a few cycles of breath, if you can just slow it down a little bit more, that's fine. Just go with the flow with yourself. Yeah. And we just welcome in all your families of light who are all crowding in at this moment, holding space for you, connecting with your high self, connecting with your divine light, the highest divine love aspect of yourself. And so we're surrounded by loving, completely unconditionally loving energies all around us. Holding space for us. And they're whispering, if we take time to stop, we'll actually hear that they're whispering. That they love you. That you are so loved. That you are so deserving and worthy of love. And how they see you. They truly, truly see you for who you are. Your family of light consists of angels, ascended masters, star beings. They could be galactic beings. They could be cosmic masters. It could be spirit animal guides. It could be crystals that you're connected to and working with. It could be the elementals and the plant people, the trees, the flowers. And of course, our unconditionally loving and supportive planet. And the energies of the sun unconditionally shining upon us, no matter what we do or what we think of ourselves. And today, we're going to use the portal of the sun to go into the center of the galaxy. So, as you're sitting there breathing, just allow yourself to just experience whatever it is you need to experience. If you find it visually challenging, then just sit in the space and just enjoy the energy swirling around you at the moment. But what we're going to do is we're just going to move up our spine and come out through the crown chakra along our antakarana, a tube of light. And this connects us with our high self. So you're following through your crown chakra, a beautiful tube of light. And we're moving through this tube of light. And we see our sun. And we just connect with the sun. We're moving into the sun. And like I said, it's a portal. And you may see some geometries, you may see something which looks like a stargate, that's fine. If that's what you need to perceive, that's absolutely fine. If you just see a beautiful star, that's okay. We enter into it and we find ourselves moving with light, moving as light as we travel. And we're just surrounded by the most beautiful light, which can be any color which comes into your consciousness now. Or it could be any colors, or it could be rainbow colors. 
So we're traveling and we find ourselves now in the galactic center. Now don't worry if people have said, it's a black hole. That's fine. Because we come, go through the black hole and we come out through the white hole. And here we remain as we're surrounded by a family of light who have followed us and have never left us. Keeping us safe, keeping us connected to ourselves. And it is here that you receive whatever energy that you need at this time to help you to strengthen your connection with yourself, with your high self, with your true, your divine light self. So just sit in this space and just relax. If the colors change, that's fine. Just go with the flow. We're all here together, surrounded circle upon circle by our families of light, our angels, our guides. And just sit here for a moment whilst you absorb all the beautiful energies which are what you are, the beautiful energies of you, your light, your sound, your dance, your vibration. And just absorb and just be. There's no need to do anything. There's no need to go anywhere. There's no need to make any decision. Just be. Just be. Because you are divine. You're infinite. You were, you are, and you will always be. You're amazing. Magnificent, beautiful. So just sit and just keep absorbing, keep being, keep experiencing if you need to. And if you feel that you need to jiggle around or you need to move or you need to dance, then you can go ahead. If you need to make some sounds to express yourself, then go ahead. You can use this time to also express yourself creatively. Or you can just use this time to just be. So we're going to be here for just a few more cycles, breath cycles. So even though you're experiencing the space and you're being who you are now in this beautiful space of you in your divine light, your divine sound, your divine dance or movement. And just breathe. Just remember to breathe. And now it is time for us to return back through this space. So what we're going to do is together as a group, we're going to move from this space. So you take a breath, and on the out breath, we move from this space back into the galactic center, back through the black hole, and you see your takarana, your tube of light, and you follow that. 
we whiz along it and you're surrounded by light as we move with our own tube of light back, back, back through the Milky Way. And we travel as a group. We know that all our families of light are around us. And we travel together. And we come through its stargate and it's our sun. We come through the sun and we see our planet, this beautiful blue globe with lots of light, lots of electric light, and lots of clouds and lots of blue and greens as well. And we see a light which is brighter than all others and that is where our bodies are. So you follow a tube of light, the Antakarana, back to that bright point of light. And you come back into your body, through your crown, back into your heart. Take a few deep breaths. Turn your consciousness facing the correct direction, facing forwards. Anchor yourself. And ground. And I'm just going to do a bit of sounding to make sure that everyone is grounded and everyone is back. And angels and families of light and guides make sure that we're all back into our bodies. Ah. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, oh, that was that was lovely. And uh, yeah, I had lots of sparkly lights, um, and also most of mine was an eagle. <laughs> I had the, I had the I had its talon, and then it's literally its face was right there. Oh wow! I mean, mm. oh, I felt I felt very blessed for that. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if um, those that are watching um, and that, especially on the replay, mm -hmm. you know, comment about how you found um, the meditation, what your journey was, um, because it's always fascinating. Um, I know when I do guided meditations, I always like to hear about people's journeys. And yeah. I, know, I know Ananda does, does, does as well. So... Ananda, have you got one final piece of advice you would give to um, anyone with regards to their spirituality? I would see it as a wonderful journey, a wonderful adventure. Not to take it too seriously. Not, I'm not saying that connection to self is not a serious thing, but there has to be a balance and I find that the more fun you can have when you do that, the more fun you can take into it, the, 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 it just creates more joy and it creates a, a lightness about things which makes it a lot easier as well. So I would say just do it with, a, with an open heart and try to have as much fun as possible. Yeah. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope everyone you've enjoyed this and found it insightful and the words of wisdom Ananda has given you have kind of like helped you further along your journey. Now Ananda, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Um, we can connect through contacting me through my website, which is www.anandastarangel.com. Exactly. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have my my my, <laughs> I have my YouTube channel of the same name as well. And I'm also on Facebook as Ananda Star Angel. Yeah, Ananda Star Angel. Um, can, I, can I possibly just talk about the retreat which I'm running in Glastonbury? Yes, yes, I was just going to, I was just going to um, say, mention about a re your retreat down in Glastonbury. I'm going. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm running a retreat from the 22nd to the 25th of March. We'll be starting 
at the end of the, the end, in the in the afternoon from about four o'clock. And Glastonbury is reputed to be the the heart chakra. Oh, hello! I can see a tail there as well. Yeah, Jesus joined us. The, yes, hi, Gypsy. To be the the heart center of the world. And what we'll be doing is we'll be working, connecting with the earth, but we're also going to be connecting with um, the highest divine love of the universe and connecting with it, bringing it into ourselves and also bringing it down into the earth. So that's mainly what we're going to be working with. And we've also got the dragons coming in who will help to support us to do that. And a lot of cosmic and star beings too, because it's, it's quite a... I feel like we're going to be, ah, there's another thing. We're also going to be working and gain a greater understanding of ourselves as portals. Because with this body, I find, I, I think I've always said before that angels, they don't have a, a 3D body. They don't have material no, form. But we do. And they can't, they, 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 they can, they can't quite, I mean, they, they come through us and they come through people and sometimes they can sort of manifest things in this plane. But most of the time, it's, they, you know, it's, it's completely, it's quite a drop for them. So with, with our bodies, I think we need to realize what a gift they are. And we can really access different dimensions just being in this body. And this is what I this is what I do basically. I'm I, it's one of my specialities, and that I do work very multidimensionally, and I can connect to lots of different different dimensions, and even beyond the fifth and the sixth dimension. So when we're at Glastonbury, we're going to be working with quite a few of those dimensions, and like I said, we're we're going to be really experiencing ourselves as portals. Yeah. So I'm really, really excited. I haven't got many places left. We'll be staying at the Chalice Well itself in one of the buildings. We're going to have it all to ourselves. So we can, not supposed to wreak havoc, but we can have lots of fun. And yeah, um, yeah and we'll be working with the, the Red Spring and working with the White Spring and going up to the Tor and experiencing all that energy and also channeling that energy into the earth. Mm, yeah. I, I love Glastonbury and it's brilliant when you actually stay at the Chalice Well because you get private access to the gardens when everyone's gone home. <laughs> Any, <stuff>. Anytime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you can connect with all with all with all the stuff. So again, if you want to find out more, then around visit Ananda's uh, website, get in contact with her um for a wonderful weekend that uh, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to. Mm, thank you. Yeah. So thank you everyone for watching and I would like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And if you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me as I would love to book a free 20 minute session with you to have a quick chat so I can find out about you and how I can help you on your journey. And by the way, I will see you next Wednesday, the 23rd of January at 8 p.m., where I'll be having a conversation with my guest, Stella Tudor, who is helping women on their spiritual growth. So I'll see you all then. Bye. Again, bye -bye. thank you, Ananda. Thanks. Bye-bye.